Hi guys, welcome. As you come in, leave your name. Hey, Ramona, how are you? Just gonna give just another one or two minutes for people to join. Thank you, Ramona. How is everybody's 4th of July or their day off? Welcome guys, we're going to get started in just another minute. Okay. Can you guys hear me with no problems? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so you know how we like to do our deep breathing at the beginning of each session. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And as people join in, they'll just jump in wherever I am in the live stream today. So let's sit up straight. Back straight. Palm facing forward on your lap. And I am going to play the meditation music so we can get started with our deep breathing. So we could get our mind, body, and skin in one accord to be to get ready to receive the message for today, okay? Close your eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, two more times in, out, in, out. Awesome. Welcome to Skin Food Journey today. Our topic for the day is all about acne. So I'm going to be sharing some tips and information that maybe you've never thought of that affects your skin and causes acne. My name is Donata Joseph and I am your virtual skin therapist here to offer you resources, education, skincare regimens, whatever you need to help you to love the skin you're in, basically, um, I'm here for you. If you don't already know, I have a Facebook group on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> it's called Donata Skin Food, and I've created that private group only for people that really don't know where to go and get the right resources to help get their skin to the place they want it to be. So in that Facebook group, people are allowed to send pictures, they're allowed to ask me questions, 
And I love to direct all questions to that group because then I don't get lost and I don't forget to respond to questions and, and, and give suggestions. So in that Facebook group, as I mentioned, you're able to send a picture, tell me what's going on, and I try to help you to come up with a skincare regimen that is basically feeding your skin type. As you guys know, just like our DNA is different, all of our skin is different. What works for you may not work for somebody else. What works for me may not work for anybody else. So I like to take the approach of really customizing what works for your skin, trying to get you to start your journey and, and do the routine for, for a few weeks. And once you do that, and whether you see results, you continue it. And if you don't see results, then we go back to the drawing board and find a regimen for you. So that's where we have all our conversation regarding skin on Facebook. And it's open to anybody that wants to join, anybody that has any skin issues. I'm not going to say I know the solution for everything, but I will do my best to get your skin to where you want it to be. So that's the not a skin food. So our, welcome, um, welcome the people that just joined on. Our topic today is acne. And I'm going to take my time and go through my notes and share this information with you. Hopefully you have a notebook to take notes. If you have kids, maybe you might not have acne, but you may have a, a member in the family that's struggling with acne. Your kids, your nieces, your nephew, whatnot, is struggling with acne. So please go ahead and share this information with them. One, you'll help them to start loving the skin that they're in and also save time and money. As you know, when you're trying to resolve skin issues, you will spend tons amount of time and tons amount of money trying to get your skin to where it needs to be. But if you don't address the root of the problem, then you're wasting time and money. So definitely share my information with other people. So to dive into our acne lesson today, what are the what are some causes of acne? And actually, that's a question. I'd love to hear from you guys, what are some causes of acne? Yes, Renee, it's so true. Awesome, Ramona, good. If anybody could give me maybe one cause of acne or what you think is the biggest cause for acne. And I know there's a delay between asking questions and, and answering. Yes, hormone, hormone imbalance, the food we eat, awesome. You guys are on the right track. Yes, if I had to put on a scale of one to five, I wanna say one is probably the biggest, is your hormones being imbalanced, especially for women. We go through our cycle every month and we have that stress. Yes, stress is another one. Overproduction of sebum, yes. And we have our cycle that comes on every month, so our hormones are fluctuating up and down, and that causes acne. For children that are going through puberty, our teen boys and our teen girls, they're going through puberty. Of course, they're not eating the right foods, they're not hydrating, so their bodies are not only going through a transition, but so is their skin. You'll have a few kids that are, are lucky and not go through the skin changes when their body's going through that change. But then you find out later on in life they go through that transition. So I have a daughter that's 19. She didn't have any issues with her skin while her while she was going through puberty. And now at the age of 19, she's starting to see that she's breaking out. And if you don't have teen acne, there's what you call adult acne. So either way, you're going through... Thank you for joining the group. Either way, you're going through some type of skin concerns throughout your life so learning to get to the root of it and addressing it addressing it early saves a lot of heartache yes me too i have that one pimple that announced to everybody that my cycle is on and sometimes it's very embarrassing so definitely hormones stress is another one and food when it comes to food a lot of people do not realize and again remember i'm saying this Keeping in mind that everybody's body is different. A lot of people, their, their trouble with acne is having dairy products. Milk, cheese, yogurt, anything that has dairy in it, 
a lot of people it causes acne and they don't realize that they spend tons of money on expensive products they're putting these harsh chemicals on their face and they don't realize it can be something as simple as eliminating something from their diet to help with their skin so those three responses were amazing thank you for for answering that, that question so we have a hormonal imbalance we have poor diet we have stress what happens during stress our hormones fluctuate and when our hormones fluctuate it causes us to produce more sebum which is oils and when our skin produces more sebum it clogs, clogs our pores so if your skin is already dirty to begin with and you have dead cells on your skin then your skin is producing more oils all that combined is just clogging your pores even more that's why it's so important to exfoliate once a week at least twice a week your skin to help unclog the pores and allow your skin to breathe when your skin is shedding and and it's getting rid of the dead cells and it doesn't have anything to help it move the dead cells away one your face is going to look discolorated because you have all the dead cells and they're just sitting there two your skin is not breathing so it's very very important to make sure that you exfoliate once or twice a week and so i can stay on track because I'm one to be all over the place I will give recommendations of what you can exfoliate with to help clear up your skin and unclog your pores health issues I'm gonna give you that answer I actually have it written down so I'm gonna try to stay on track so I'm not all over the place make sure I cover everything but I do have some recommendations for exfoliating your skin gentle exfoliation nothing harsh and abrasive Another one is, is health issues. You can have some type of health issues that is causing your skin to react and, and act up. So health conditions also is another reason for acne. Medication. One medication, um, one, I had one customer on Instagram ask me questions and come to find out she was on birth control pills. Birth control pills will cause um, imbalances in your hormones. And when that happens, the imbalance in your hormones pushes some birth control, uh, birth control pills causes your hormones to go on overdrive. And by causing your hormones to go on overdrive, it produces more oils to your skin, which turns around and causes a breakout. So some people do not realize that their acne issue can be as simple as the um, birth control pill that they're on or any type of medication that would cause the same reaction. So another cause of acne is medication. Another one is dehydration. When your skin is dehydrated, your pores are tight and closed. They're not breathing. They're becoming clogged because there's not a lot of fluid in your systems to hydrate your skin. So dehydration is another very simple reason why someone can have acne. So that's why it's recommended when doing, it should be recommended, I should say, when you're giving, when a doctor or a dermatologist or a facialist is talking to their customer about acne, that one of the things that they talk about is hydration. And um, speaking of hydration, guys, I have a water calculator. Um, I meant to do this before the call that I'm gonna add to my link on Instagram. So instead of you trying to figure out how much water should I drink, what is the correct amount, I have a, 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 an amazing business partner that put together um, a water calculator for me and I'm going to add the link to the link in Instagram. So after this call, within the next hour, you'll be able to go to that calculator and figure out how much water you need to drink for the day so you can stay hydrated. Whether you have acne or not, it's very important that you stay hydrated. Your skin needs that hydration. Your body needs that hydration. As you guys have heard me say on other calls, your muscles, your bones, your brain, your skin, every organ in your body needs that hydration. We're, we're made of 70 to 75% of water. So if you're urinating, you're perspiring, you're spitting up, you're talking, everything that you do, um, when you're sweating, everything that you do, 
you're you're letting go of water even talking the air evaporating the liquids are coming out of our bodies the the moisture is coming out of our body so you need to replenish that with water so definitely staying hydrated is a very important thing to do when you have acne um okay give me just a second and make sure i covered everything on this card and then we can move on to the next one okay one way that you can balance your hormones exercise sleep and stress management Stress management is major and we've covered that on another live stream live stream of how to decrease stress there's exercises you can do on your face and we'll do one or two before we close the call to help you to learn to de-stress meditation deep breathing just disconnecting turning off your phone your TV and just sitting by yourself and just relaxing helps to decrease stress which will help with acne Another reason why people can have acne and not even realizing it, makeup. Makeup that are oil-based or mineral-based or based with silicone. Putting those types of products on your skin or any type of product on your skin that are mineral-based, silicone-based, any type of oils that are too heavy for your skin will clog your pores. And again, when your, clothes clog, your pores are clogged, your pores are not breathing. So when they're not breathing, they're breeding bacteria and it's going to turn into a pimple or breakouts on your face. So be very aware of whatever product you put on your skin that you're paying attention to the ingredients. I've covered coconut oil before. People that put coconut oil on their face and they think that's the best thing for their skin and wonder why they're breaking out and they can't clear up the breakout. So anytime you put any type of product on your face, whether it's a cleanser, whether it's a moisturizer, whether it's foundation, whether it's serum, whether it's uh, a makeup brush, all these things have ingredients in it that may not be going well with your face, that doesn't react well with your face. So pay attention. One thing that is very important also is making sure that you remove your makeup at night. Removing your makeup at night allows your pores to breathe. When you leave the makeup on, it clogs your pores and it goes in deeper into your skin and you don't want that. That's where when that's when you have to do ex extractions and and clean out your pores. And the less that you have to worry about your your pores being clogged, the better it is for your skin. Um protective styles and I've, I mentioned this before hair products when you're washing your hair you're conditioning your hair you're moisturizing your hair even your hair products you have to be vigilant vigilant and aware of what are in the hair products because when you're washing your hair where does where does the water go down your face down your back people have acne on their chest they have acne on their back they have acne along the sides of their face and they don't understand why. So even with your hair products that you use to wash, condition, and moisturize your hair, you have to be aware of what's in those products because those can in turn be causing your skin reaction. Sports, if you play sports, if you work out, if you go to the gym, the clothes you wear, the, the headband, the gears that you, you put on to protect your hair while you're playing sports or when you're working out. When you're wearing those things continuously, some people wear it one time and wash it. Some people wear it more than once. So let's say you have a headband at the gym to, to cover, kind of protect the sweat from coming down on your forehead. You wear that headband more than one time, not really thinking it through. That headband has sweat on it, dirt, bacteria, or whatever else that could get on the headband. Then you turn around and wear that headband again, and then you start to realize you're starting to get breakouts here. And it's as simple as something that you would have worn on your hair. So you And your sports bra, you're working out, you're wearing a sports bra. You're sweating at the gym, you wear the sports bra, you leave the sports bra on for the next three, four, five hours, and then you start seeing a breakout in that area, or you see a breakout in the area where your bra strap is. All these are, 
are causes for acne. If you're sweating at the gym, as soon as you can change your clothes is the best thing for your skin because one, you're allowing it to breathe and you're removing the sweat, the toxins that are on the bacteria that are on the material. So definitely anytime you're working out, and this is for your kids too, if you have young men that plays football, especially with football, you're wearing a helmet, you can't wash inside the helmet, it, the, the helmet is full of pads. So these young men will wear the helmets over and over and over again, and then you have a son that's full of acne on their forehead, and sometimes we attribute it to puberty, but it's not puberty, it's something that they're putting on their head that's causing the skin to react over and over again. The baseball caps that they wear, any kind of hat, just the bandanas that they wear, all these things that we put on that touches our skin that we're not cognizant that is causing breakouts on our skin. We have to be more aware of that. So any type of sporting gear, again, after you come from the gym, make sure you get out of those wet clothes. Um, Sometimes women have um, acne between the, the private area, like your thigh area is irritated. Some some people have it in their, their um, gluteus maxima. They don't understand why they have acne there in their back. I mean, acne can show up any and everywhere. So when it does, you have to ask yourself, okay, what have I been doing that's repetitive? And what have I been doing in the last 72, three to four days that can be breaking, causing my skin to break out? Don't think of a lot. Yes, that's true. We don't think of a lot of this stuff, especially with our young men. We're not thinking about, okay, the, the gear that they're wearing all the time could be causing their skin breakouts because it's so normal. You just throw on a football helmet and here we go and not thinking about their skin. We have to get to a point where anything that touches our skin can attribute to our skin causing ir ir irritation. So yes, we really don't think about this stuff. Um, Okay, even women, when we're wearing hats, those big those big sun hats, we have to be careful of how often it's hitting our, our skin. And also with those big sun hats, I, I hope I'm saying it right, it's the one with the, it blocks the sun. Those type of hats, they're abrasive. The material that's used to make these hats are very abrasive. So we have to be careful when they're sitting up on our skin, on our head, it's rubbing our skin. So be very careful about that. Okay, I already spoke about products that we use that can be um, used on our face, as in makeup, and products that we use in our hair. When purchasing products for your skin, be sure that you pay attention that it says non-comodogenic. Non-comodogenic. C-O-M-E-D-O-G-E-N-I-C. Non-comedogenic means, very simply, it does not cause your pores to clog. And if you were in my very first live feed, even the oils that you use on your skin, sweet almond oil, coconut oil, apricot oil, olive oil, um, jojoba oil, rosehip oil, all these nourishing oils, even those oils have a comedogenic number from zero to five. So even if you're going to the store and you're buying a natural product for your skin and you see, oh, coconut oil, yay, this is natural, let me put it on my face, and not knowing that the comodogenic number is high for coconut oil and you're using it on your skin, you have to be aware for every single ingredient that is in the product. If you purchase a product and the first um, ingredient is coconut oil, I wouldn't advise you to buy that product for your skin. Now, if the first ingredient is shea butter, I would say go ahead and get it for your skin because the comodogenic number for shea butter is a two, and that's really low on the scale of zero to five. So even when you're buying your products, either it says some companies write clearly on it, it's non-comodogenic, which is perfect. If not, then you have to kind of figure out, okay, if these oils are high in the comedogenic scale or not. So that's a little bit of research you have to do, or you can simply jump in on a Facebook group and ask that question. 
and I'll be more than happy to tell you because I, I know the answers to the different oils. And if I don't, I can look it up for you. But definitely be, be aware of the products that you put on your skin and what each ingredient is in that product. Um, salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, sulfate, sulfur. Those three things are really high when it comes to being prescribed from a dermatologist for an acne cure. The things of the, the problem with these products, we have acne, we're freaking out, we want to clear our skin, we run to the dermatologist, they give us something to use, they say use it once a day, and we get impatient, we want our skin to clear up so quickly, we use it more than one, one time a day. So we hear putting all these chemicals and, and, and uh, harsh products on our skin, hoping that we will clear our acne when in fact we're making it worse because not only are the ingredients in these products very harsh to begin with, but when you're using it more than you should, you're causing your skin to become dry when, and irritated. So now when your skin becomes dry, you're in, in, in essence telling your skin, make more oils. So then your skin, your sebum, sebum sends the oil army out and start producing more oils to the skin because you caused your skin to be dry by putting extra products, more extra salicylic acid and whatnot, these harsh chemicals to your face. So you're, counter, you're counteracting what you're trying to do to begin with. You want your skin to clear up, but what you're doing is causing it to get worse. So if you are prescribed one of these more on the harsher side ingredients, use it as directed and don't use it more than you should. There's a balance to everything in life. You can do too much of it and a good thing turns bad and then too much of a bad thing makes it worse. So make sure there's balance in everything that you do. Even simple things as I hear people use lemon, apple cider vinegar, um, witch hazel. When they have acne, they're trying to clear up your skin. That's amazing. But when you're using witch hazel three times a day to get rid of your acne or to cause your skin to be less oily, you're doing damage to your skin because witch hazel can be drying. So when you're using it too much, apple cider vinegar, lemon, all those can be drying and you're doing it too much, you're causing your oily skin to become dry, and then again, turn around and produce extra oils that you didn't want in the first place. So keep in mind, if there's anything you take out of this live stream today, everything in balance, everything in balance. Um, okay, give me a second, guys. Like I said, I have my note cards tonight because I wanna make sure I share as much information with you guys and I don't want to miss out on anything. I saw a question, so I'm going to look to answer. Okay, you use coconut oil to remove makeup. Is your skin oily or dry? By nature, what is your skin type? Okay, the next one I have here is hair products. Um, I already went over that. Especially if your hair products contain sulfate. Be very, very careful. Um, how I recommend to... Okay, combination. Give me one second. How I recommend to wash your hair in the shower or in the sink or however wash your hair. If you don't go to a hair salon where they do it backwards... I recommend to bring your head forward and wash your hair. When your head is forward, it's away from your chest and away from your neck, so all the products are not falling. I know some people wash their hair standing up in the shower just like this and everything falls all over their face, chest, and back. If you can, bring your head forward in the shower, wash your hair, do whatever you need to do with your head forward so at least the water is falling this way and not this way. And then when you finish washing your hair and putting conditioner and rinsing everything off, make your skin the last thing you wash. So don't just wash your hair, condition it, 
and just get out the shower. Wash your face last. So don't rinse it, don't wipe it. Wash your face and let that be the last thing that is clean when you walk out the shower if you wash your hair in the tub. So you wanna make sure you, you remove all the residue. Okay, the question is combination skin. You can use sweet almond oil, avocado oil, there was another one. Sweet almond oil, avocado oil, jojoba oil, which is amazing. Jojoba oil is a little bit more expensive, but jojoba oil is actually very good for acne and it's very good for taking makeup off your skin. So if I had to pick one out of the three, I would I would choose jojoba oil. You can get that at GNC. You can get that at NutraSmart, Whole Foods, any of those places that sell um, whole whole products, with natural products, sorry. Any of those places that sell natural products, jojoba oil should be one of the things that they stock because it's a very common oil and it's very good for combination, dry or oily skin and very good for acne. And if you notice when you use jojoba, jojoba oil, it goes right into the pores. It doesn't leave a heavy layer on your skin so you'll like it, you're welcome. Smoking, if you're a smoker or if you're around somebody that smokes, be very careful. Think of your skin. What happens when the person is smoking or if you're smoking, all that smoke goes onto your face. You know how when maybe you go into a club and people are smoking and you walk out and the smell of the smoke is in your hair? Just imagine what's happening to your pores. Your pores have all that smoke and it clogs your pores. So. If you are a smoker or if you're around somebody that smokes, be careful for your skin. Just think of not only does your lungs inhale it, but your skin inhales the smoke. So you got to be very careful because it clogs pores and it will cause wrinkles. It causes the el elasticity of your skin to become weak and the collagen, there's not as much collagen that's produced in your skin. So be very careful around people that are smoking. And also the smoking dries out your skin so you want to be aware of that we went over this in one of my live streams so I won't go in too too deep on this one sleep sleep is very important you know sleep um, reduces stress which in turn reduces the cortisol that that's produced in your body and regulates your hormones so sleep is very important if you can get your body into a good sleeping pattern I know we're all stressed we have a very busy life um, we think it's good to stay up all night and sleep in the morning and make up for our sleep there's really no such thing because as I mentioned before each of our organs has a certain time to re nourish itself so when you're sleeping past 10 o'clock between 10 and 6 o'clock in the morning a lot of your primary organs are re, uh, re, re nourishing itself throughout the night so you definitely if you can get into a good sleep pattern we know that there's times there's family in town or an event and you have to stay up late but try to get into a really good sleeping pattern it will not only help your skin it will help your eyes from revealing that you don't sleep well at night um, if you have insomnia and you get into a good sleeping pattern that insomnia should subside because you're finally teaching your body to get into a routine. So be sure that you get into a good sleeping pattern to help your stress and your skin. Picking and popping your pimples. Some people think that is so good to do. Here's why it's not. And even as an esthetician, when I have somebody come in with a really bad pimple, I don't even touch it and I tell the client to let it run its course. When you pop your pimple, you're not paying attention to the process. One, your hands is dirty. Two, you're not cleansing your face before you're popping. Three, you're not toning your face after you're popping and you're not, you're, you're spreading bacteria. So a lot of times, we may find a pimple when we're in the mirror or when we're in a car. Say we're driving and we're looking at our skin under the light and you're thinking, oh, let me just pop this real quick. Great. You just popped it. 
not only did you pop it, your hands are dirty, so any bacteria from your hands went into that pimple. Then by popping it and not cleaning it first, you've caused that bacteria in that pimple to spread across your face because honestly, I don't think any of us are really that careful to pop and pull away. We're popping and we're probably popping several pimples at one time if we have more than one. So by doing that, you're spreading it all over your face and wonder why your skin is becoming irritated a few days later from popping one pimple. So you have to take the per, the um what would, how would I say that? The proper precautions when you're <laughs> somebody's a pimple popper. You have to take the proper precautions when you're popping pimples. And I know it's addictive. I have people, I have one cousin that she drools every time she sees a pimple and she wants to pop everybody's pimple in the family. Stay away from those people because as tempting as it is to get rid of that pimple, it is causing inflammation, it is causing it to become more irritated, and if that they're not an esthetician, they're coming to your skin with dirty hands and attacking that pimple, and while they're having fun doing it, it's doing extra damage to your skin. So, if you have to pop a pimple, wash your face, Yes, <laughs> yuck. Wash your face. Take a towel or a napkin. Don't use your fingers because I'm sure you didn't scrub under your nails. You're not thinking. You're not thinking it through. So wash your hands. Take a napkin. If you're going to pop it and you have to pop it, remove the pimple. Pull it out. Don't let it go down and, and, and spread. And then make sure that you use, you wash that area again and you use some type of toner. A simple toner you can make at home is six to eight ounces of water and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. That makes an amazing toner. And when I say water, I mean filtered water, not faucet water, filtered water. So if you have to, have to, have to pop your pimples, please do it the correct way. If not, you're going to be one of my customers asking for scar butter because you have a ton of hyperpigmentation on your face and that's because you could not keep your hands away from your skin. So as an esthetician, it's sometimes my kids think it's funny, but when I have a pimple, I just let that pimple ride out. And sometimes it'll be right here, right here. And they're like, mom, oh my gosh, you have this big, so what? It's a pimple, it'll go away. Now, if you really have to get rid of that pimple, you can also use tea tree. Now, if you're using tea tree, always dilute it. So sometimes when it's my pimples, really that one pimple every month that gets really bad, I will get a Q-tip. I'll put a drop of oil. And remember, almond oil, jojoba oil, olive oil, one of those oils. I drop one on the, the Q-tip. I drop a... a a drop of tea tree and then I put another drop of oil on the top like that that's diluted the oil the essential oil and then I'll place it on my face on my pimple I may do, do, do that one or two times before I go to sleep nine times out of ten my pimple looks much better the next day when I wake up some people can tolerate tea tree straight on their face I never recommend you use any essential oil straight some people get allergic to it and then they become sensitive to it to the, for the rest of their life. So always dilute your essential oil. If you want, you could put a drop of oil in your palm and then take the essential oil, put a drop in your palm. All you need is one drop. Guys, don't be excessive with the tea tree. Tea tree is very strong. So put one drop of oil in your palm, one drop of tea tree, take a Q-tip, rub it in together and put it on that pimple. But that is a very simple solution, inexpensive solution to getting rid of your pimples and at least helping it to look better without you popping it and causing more damage to your skin. Guys, I'm, and I'm going to answer questions. I'm going to just get through this because I think I have about 20 more minutes and I want to make sure that I give you everything that I have. So towards the end, I will definitely look at the questions and be sure I answer it for you, okay? Um... 
I've, I've covered this before. Do not touch your face with dirty hands. I'm not going to drill that in anymore. Do not touch your face with dirty hands. Please. Those that like to sit like this at work and wonder why they get pimples all around here. Pimples all around here. Pimples here. Be careful with your hands and your face. Laundry detergent. Another thing that we don't think about often. Laundry detergent. It Yes, laundry detergent is to wash your clothes. But also, it washes your sheets and it washes your towels. So if you're using a laundry detergent that's abrasive and harsh, you're sleeping on that pillowcase, you're washing your face and using that washcloth on your skin, and you're using that towel on your body. And if you have acne on your back and your chest, your clothes are on your skin. So be very careful with what laundry detergent you use and move over to something that's less abrasive and that has no fragrance. I know sometimes it's hard to get away from the fragrances, but that alone can be causing skin issues. So be very careful about that. So you get a laundry detergent that's fragrance free and dye free. Okay, we're going to get into the proper ways to wash your face. Washing your face. When you're washing your face with any type of, um, whether it's natural or something that's prescribed to you, be very gentle in washing your face. Your face is already inflamed and irritated from the acne. So if you're washing your face vigorously, trying to remove the oils, one, you're causing your skin to become more irritated, and two, you're causing your skin to become dry. So be very gentle when you're washing your face, especially when you have irritation, you have rashes, you have acne, eczema, psoriasis. Be very gentle when you're washing your face. And do not wash your face excessively. I already went over that. Washing your face excessively could cause it to become more dry, so be very aware of that. My recommendation on how many times to wash your face, I recommend to people wash their face at night. You know your skin, so you have to pay attention to what your skin likes. If you have normal combination, oily skin, I recommend for you to wash your face at night before you go to sleep. One, you're taking all the pollutants from the day off of your face, and two, you're going right to sleep. So if you're washing your face, you're moisturizing your face when you go to sleep, when you wake up, your face is pretty much in the same condition as when it went to sleep. So all you really have to do is clean around your eyes. Now, people that have really, 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 really dry skin, sometimes I tell them if they have to, wash it again in the morning just so that they can moisturize. Now, listen when I say wash your skin. My step, my routine for washing my, um, washing my skin is two steps. Wash with my pine tar soap, moisturize with my anti-aging serum. That is it. That's my whole skincare regimen. Twice a week, I will exfoliate. Some other people, they have so many steps to washing their skin, and in those so many steps, I mean, um, to their skincare regimen, and in those so many steps, that's more chemicals you're putting on your face. So I don't know what your individual skincare regimen is, but less is more. If you can get to a point where you're not having so many chemicals and, and so many products on your face, it's better for your skin. So my recommendation, wash your face once a day at night before you go to sleep. You're taking all the pollutants, the toxins from the air off your face, and then you're waking up with the same clean face you went to sleep with. Now, if you work out and you go to the gym or you get very sweaty during the day, Yes, please wash your face again. What I'm talking about is people that go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night, wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, they didn't go anywhere, they didn't do anything, and they're washing their face at night and in the morning. That's not necessary. That's a little excessive. You don't have to do it. But if you wake up, you wash your skin at night, you wake up in the morning, you go to the gym, please wash your face after you go to the gym. Please wash your face after you've perspired excessively because you don't want that on your skin. So be sure you cleanse it off. Um, I talked about sleeping on a clean pillowcase. I talked about wrapping your hair. 
uh, I talked about the second recommendation, uh, cleaning your skin after you work out. Make sure that you cleanse your skin gently and not use harsh and abrasive products that will irritate your skin. Exfoliate maximum two times a, a week. Yes, two times a week. You don't need to exfoliate more than that, especially if you have acne, you're causing more irritation to your skin, and then you'll be stripping your skin of its natural oil. So do not exfoliate more than twice a week. Two times is enough. What is a recommendation for an exfoliation for the skin? You guys know I'm very big on fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables has so many enzymes, minerals, vitamins, Things that we need to feed the skin so my recommendation if your skin can take it that's something that you would have to do a patch test is pineapple pineapple is very good at removing the dead cells allowing your 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 clogs to breathe and it also helps with diminishing acne so if you're not allergic to pineapple pineapple makes an amazing exfoliation twice a week if not pineapple Pa uh, papaya is also very amazing. Those two have bromelain in them, which is amazing for removing dead cells from your skin. So definitely look into those two fruits and vegetables, um, fruits, sorry, and use on your skin. And how you would use it, you would wash your face, you would, in a circular motion, put it all over your skin, and you'll notice that you'll feel your skin tingling. Do not leave those especially those two fruits on your face for more than five minutes then you're if you do it will start eating up the 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 healthier layer of your skin and you don't want that sorry so be sure that you leave it on for no more than five minutes so again pineapple and papaya are amazing for exfoliating your skin if you have a natural exfoliator you can use that you don't want anything with sugar in it it can become very abrasive um, moisturizers, like I mentioned before, if you want to moisturize your skin with something natural, you can use jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is non-greasy and it's amazing for acne. So that's something you could simply pick up at the store as an all-purpose moisturizer for your skin. What will help with acne also? Protecting your skin from the sun. So definitely use SPF. I have a lot of people that ask what is the best type of SPF to use. I don't have a certain brand to recommend, but I will tell you, do not you purchase anything that is more than 30. Anything that is more than 30, the only difference is it has more chemicals. It does not protect the skin any more than the 30 SPF. So when you're buying SPF, yes, especially us African Americans, I hear a lot of people say, well, I'm black, I don't need SPF. No, please, you do, because you need to protect your, your skin from the sun. So definitely look into that if you're not using it and don't get anything more than 30. 30 is the perfect number. Anything less is not protecting your skin enough. Anything more is just full of chemicals. So 30 is the perfect number. Um, and we're cl almost close to wrapping it up. When it comes to using natural products for acne, keep in mind natural products takes longer than products that are full of chemicals. So when you're moving on to a natural skincare regimen for acne, please give your skin time to adjust. I always recommend to clients, give yourself two to four weeks to see the changes in your skin. When you're changing your skincare regimen, give it time to work. And not only that, be sure that when you're changing your skincare regimen, you don't just use a whole bunch of new products at first. Because when you do that, if your skin starts to react in a negative way, you have no clue which product caused the negative reaction to your skin. So anything new you introduce into your skin, do it one at a time. And give it about one to two weeks and watch the changes in your skin. Yes, sometimes it's hard, especially if you're moving from chemical-based products to natural products and you want to start brand new and don't want to use anything with chemicals, when I consult with people at the farmer's market on the weekends, I always suggest, again, a two-step regimen, the pine tar soap and the acne cream. Ac not acne cream, I'm sorry, scar butter. 
So those two, it's only two products. So if there's any skin irritation, we already know which ones to 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 play with. That we can eliminate and play with two. But when you're coming with a three, four, five step new skincare regimen and something is reacting to your skin, you don't know what is causing the skin irritation. So be very careful of how you approach a new skincare regimen. Okay, guys, give me one more second. I'm just going to make sure that I've covered everything, and then I'm going to answer questions. I did mention don't jump from product to product. Allow it time to, to take effect. Awesome. Okay, so this is everything that I had to cover for you guys tonight. Give me one second. Let me check for any questions that I did miss. And then we'll be wrapping it up in one to two minutes. Okay, so I answered the question on what do I recommend for exfoliating the skin. Pineapple or um, papaya. You can actually mix it together. That makes an amazing mix. I also have a bundle that is up on my link in um, Instagram where I created a skin food recipe book. So I'm doing pre-orders right now for the bundle. It consists of the recipe book, a video, two videos, and a Q&A session. So you definitely want to check that out because I am going to be giving different recipes and giving you exact measurements that you can use for your skin type. So definitely look into that. But in the meantime, you can use pineapple and papaya. And hopefully you're not allergic to either one of them. Please remember, if you're allergic to something internally, you'll be allergic to it externally. Keep that in mind. Um, let me see if there's any more questions, guys. I already answered that question. I said jojoba oil. Um, what tips do you have for dark circles? Okay. I don't believe coconut oil is going to help with dark circles. But if you have dark circles, dark circles could be a ton of things. So I'm going to give you about four to five. Lack of water, dehydration, genetics, too much salt, rubbing your eyes, um, not protecting your eyes in the sun, not sleeping enough. Those are the, the things that come off the top of my head when it comes to dark circles. So. If you ask me what do I recommend, I need to look into natural things that you can pretty much pick up at the store. I know cucumbers help. I know potatoes help. If it's something that you want to purchase for my skin line, I've had several clients tell me that my oatmeal solve helps with their dark circles. I actually got another customer tell me that this weekend. So if that's something you want to look into also, you're more than welcome to purchase the oatmeal solve. But those are some things that comes off the top of my head regarding dark circles. Um, no, washing too much. Yes, washing too much will make skin more oily because it will strip the natural oils from the skin, causing it to be dry. And then by it being dry, it's going to produce more oils because your skin is thinking it's not making enough. So yes, you're correct. I love argon oil. Argon oil is amazing and the comedogenic number for argon oil, if I'm not mistaken, is zero. So argon oil is amazing. You're doing a great job by pulling away from coconut oil. And I'm glad that you've seen that your, clear, your skin has cleared up. So that's awesome. Okay, guys, so let's see if there's anything else I need to tell you. You know we have Skin Food, Wednesday, um, skin food Journey every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Thank you guys for joining. You know I have Mask Off Mondays at 7 a.m. on Mondays, and that's about mindfulness and meditation and helping you getting started for your week. So that's on Monday mornings at 7 a.m. Please check the link in my bio. I have tons of information. I have YouTube channels. I mean, YouTube videos, iPods, not iPods, podcasts, and um, my ebook, my free ebook called 10 Steps to Understanding Your Skin. And if you want to, to grab a hold of the bundle that will be for $17 during the pre order period, I guarantee you're going to love the information I have on that. And guess what? That is cheaper than a lot of the makeup that we put on our skin and a lot of the products that we. 
that we use. So definitely want to grab a hold of that. I enjoyed having you guys on. I appreciate you guys interacting with me tonight and asking questions. May you be blessed and have an amazing rest of your week. Have a great night. Bye.